One word I just heard you using a lot there, Krelzy, was arrow, and arrow was very important, especially at Mount Panorama. That was something that the McLaren was having issues with in the form of their rear diffuser, and it started to come loose over the top of the mountain, getting very squirrely for Clark Quinn, who did a brilliant first stint, took the car all the way up into seventh position. Unfortunately, they're now down about seven or eight laps. Clark said probably can't make that up over the span of the race. Not sure how much further they will go, but right now, Kevin Esther behind the wheel of the car. We can count on him to put in some fast laps while the car is fixed and ready to go. Shit, Adam, he's down in the pits. Big problems for one gentleman driver in the paddock, John. The number 75, Steve McLaughlin, has no radio communication. He didn't do his driver plug in correctly, and they started off with a sign that said 75, driver plug. That didn't work, didn't get his attention. So they've now moved to this, hoping that it will get his immediate attention because his fuel is starting to run low. Well, ben Barker has certainly been putting on a show so far here today. Ben, you've been running with times in the 209s even. I mean, you've been blisteringly fast out there, but traffic has been an issue. What's it been like for you in the B class? Yeah, the, the traffic's an issue when you catch it, you know. Um. Second, and Shay Adam is down in pit lane with more. The cars are rolling out. The car that just rolled out from behind me was the B class pole sitter. The time set by Ben Barker was good enough to make it halfway up the class A category. That is one car to watch today. Luke Yolden will be starting. He is filling in for Earl Bamber, who drove the car last year, along with Ben Barker and Stephen Grove. They won the category in 2014. Luke Yolden won his class in 2014 as well. This is a car to keep an eye on for today. With more from Pit Lane G, it's been busy this morning, Shay. What, uh, what have you got for us now? Well, I've got a guy who got out of his car looking like he was ready to go to an Oakland Raiders football game. Richard, half your face was covered in black soot. What was all that from? Oh, uh, it's a lot of debris in the track arm, yeah. Richard Gardner is the driver who was behind the wheel of that yellow Porsche that hit the wall very, very hard earlier on yeah, to sorry. avoid the leading number 15 yeah, Audi. And Richard, yeah. you were behind the wheel of the car. Sorry to interrupt. You were behind the wheel of the car at the time. Take us through what your perspective was. Well, basically, uh, there was a couple of us going um, over Reed Park. Go down to one of our number ones in the pit lane. Here's Shea Adam. Bentley is number one on top of the timing sheets right now, but it's who's in second and third that's really interesting to me because Erebus and Nissan came in and pitted together in the box right there and the box right there. Nissan took on more fuel, giving up the second place position to Dean Canto in the 36 Erebus. So the Erebus is in second, but for how long? Because the Nissan can stay out a little bit longer on its stint. Great analysis, Shep. Thank you. Pirelli, this year you ran Michelin's last year, but the same car. Do you feel a big difference? Uh, yeah, I feel we got a very good race package this year. The Pirelli is uh, a very good tire over a long distance. The 63 Erebus came in, and it was being driven by Nathan Morcom. He got out of the car, handed over to Simon Hodge, and the team did minor updates to the car. They took all four Pirellis off, including one that was absolutely demolished. It had no air left in it. All four of the tires were heavily covered in stone, so I think you're probably right on that, John. Going off the track had something to do with the puncture. Well, David Brabham is in the car right now, started the race. What has he been reporting to you about the handling and the way the car has been performing? Well, he had, he's had a bit of a tough time so far. We did have one taker to the pits in particular, the 97 Craft Bamboo Aston Martin that was running in second. Stefan Mucca behind the wheel. Stefan, you've never been to this track before this week, and now you're out there running in second. I'm guessing that you like it? Yeah, absolutely. I really love the track. The car's running good overall. And Shea Adam is down in the pit lane. There's a lot of smiling GT Academy graduates there, Shea. Florian, this is simply amazing. Two years ago, you weren't even racing, and now you've won the 12 hours of Bathurst. Congratulations. Yeah, it's like I almost can't believe it. I really... Now, if you were watching the screens there, if you saw the picture of the Corvette being cleaned, it wasn't because the guys thought they had a little bit of extra time so they were going to make it look like a show car. They actually have to clean the surface off before they apply the gaffer tape or the 100-mile-an-hour tape. That means that there was some damage to the front bumper that needs to be repaired. Otherwise, it would affect the aerodynamics of the car, which would effectively take them out of the race.